So you're working and researching on the internet, you're looking up information on Steve Jobs, and you find these great websites, but how do you find them later? And what if you just want a little quote here? How can you come back to them or mark what's important on them? How can you organize your research to make it all easier? Now, sometimes people will just go over here and they'll just try to print all this out. But is that really what you want to do? You could email it to yourself by, you know, copying this link here and then just pasting it in uh, to your email. But you know, there's another way. You can track and organize materials for a research project and help yourself stay organized and save it any way you want. Digo lets you easily share and give it to groups. It'll annotate web pages, organize, share things, and really you're creating a personal library using this technique called social bookmarking. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is to sign up for Digo. Now if you're a student and you have a teacher, you might have to set it up a slightly different way. Uh, your teacher may have a special way for you to set it up. Um, but you can also hit learn more if you're a teacher and notice the teachers can get this for free um, and set up your classrooms and you have all kinds of extra features that allow you to use this with younger children. So now I'm in my Digo account and I've already, you see I already got a lot of bookmarks in here. You do want to install the Digo extension. It does work best in Chrome but you can get an extension for just about any type of web browser. You'll notice that I have lots of things. They're tagged and organized. If you're wondering why I have so many things from Twitter, it's because I use this special service right here to automatically send everything I tweet out to Digo so that I can find it later. So let's go back over to the Steve Jobs quote here and let's click on our Digo button. I'm going to say annotate. And I've got to hit refresh um, because I have just recently logged into Digo. So I'm going to click the button here, click annotate. Now I can say, okay, I'm going to highlight this in different colors. Great highlighting. I can also even write on the page. Great quotes and hit save. And once I have saved this, I can share this to a group. And I'm a member of lots of different groups, including groups of students. So I can actually have a class group and write a comment that I can share with just about anyone. Great article on jobs. And now I'm sending this to all the educators there that are part of that group. And just sending it and organizing it. And you can do things. So teachers can mark things up and you can do all kinds of things on there. But what if I want to bookmark this? Now, first thing I'm going to do, turn off the highlighting here, and I'm going to say, okay, I want this to be part of my quote. Now, you can see this is popping up, the highlight, and the words there, and I can even search information on that. But I'm actually going to hit my bookmark button. And you can see now that the quote that I just did is automatically pulled in. Now I can add to it, and in fact, you definitely want to make sure you add to it. I'm just going to add a few things there. Um, nonsense, but you're going to type something legitimate. Um, you don't have to worry about plagiarizing if you actually put each individual article in your own words. So I'm going to say Steve Jobs. Uh, and I'm going to say inspiration and I've got a couple things in there. Now Outliner is what my students are going to use and I've already created an outline called the history of computing presentation. You can also create your own new outliner. So I'm going to click here and send it to the history of computing. Now I can share it to a group if I have a group that I'm researching with, um, but at this point I'm just creating it and saving it to outliner. Now when I go into Digo you'll see that when I click on my outliners I've already got history of computing presentation in there and I've got information in there. Now it gives me a little bitty reminder here that I want to use the tab key to indent and shift tab to take it back out. So shift tab takes it back out and tab indents it or you can just drag and drop your bullets. You can insert bookmarks anywhere so you can just drag and put this together. This is great for when you're doing online research or putting together an online presentation. And then you can even create a link for the outliner. And for my students, this is the link that they're going to turn in to me for their outline. 
So you can see I've got the little shortcuts over here, but I've kind of got this outline going and I can click and type introduction to Steve Jobs and I'm gonna get that correct. And if I wanted to put this here, I'm just gonna use my little arrow. If I hit tab, it puts it underneath and tab there and I could say, okay, uh, this might be a cool video to show at the front. So for when you're giving a speech or creating some sort of video, typically you're going to want to open with a wow. So you may want to have a wow and an intro, have your three points and have your conclusion. And you can do your full organization in here. Now when I'm done, I can hit the shareable link. This is a secret shareable link. I can just share with my teacher and turn in on my learning management system, Haiku or whatever it is you use. And that person doesn't even have to log in. So that's really cool. And there are other things that you can do. You can even copy this and paste this into uh, Microsoft Word or you could even copy and paste it and start putting it these notes into your PowerPoint if you're going to do that. So there's a lot of different features that you have in this outliner tool. Just a fantastic tool to be able to organize speeches and drag all kinds of things in there.